What is going on, everybody? Welcome to episode number 73 of Ghost in the Night, a hauntings and paranormal podcast. Today, we're going to talk about something a little bit more darker, and that started with a question I thought from reading some news articles and everything since we've been quarantined for a while, and that basically is, is there a new satanic panic? Satanism tends to get the blame for a lot of stuff and I want to actually kind of look into that and talk about that in this episode. So I'm basically going to go over the origin stories of Satan and I want to talk a little bit about Satanism and everything that goes along with it. Is it exactly what we think it is? I I learned a lot when I did the research on this and I wanted to share that with you. I know there's going to be some blowback on this but you know it's an uncomfortable topic that actually I think needs to be talked about so let's go ahead and get the podcast started ghost in the night with phil sams let's dive into satanism and the worship of satan as a whole it's a fascinating topic when you mention the word satan it has such a guttural fear. We've been taught to fear Satan. We've been taught that there is evil out in the world, which there is. I'm not going to say that there is no evil in the world. There 100% is evil in the world. However, we have been taught that Satan is the basis of all evil in the world. That is what has been embedded in us to think from the time we were could communicate, basically, if you come from a religious background. Now, As I've gotten older, and I know people are going to, just by me talking in this way, people are going to automatically think that I have some sympathy or I condone evil acts or what we perceive as Satanism. But I think the word Satanism and the worship of Satan is much more complex than putting a red monster with horns and a pitchfork on a pedestal and worshiping him. It's much more complex than that. It's much, there's much more to it. And I think religious leaders have oversimplified what Satanism is. And I think it's something I want to address. And I've been wanting to do this for a while and kind of been putting it off, doing some research because I'm not an expert on Satanism. I only know what I was told as a youngster. And with me diving into the paranormal, trying to rationalize my experiences, rationalize the field in general, and forming my own opinions, evil and demons and Satan comes to the forefront when you're in this field, in the occult, in which I have done a whole episode about the occult prior. But what really got me thinking about this, we've all, I'm sure you've seen the TV show Lucifer, and when that first came out, my initial thought was, oh, I got to watch this. I just want to see what it's about. And as I watched it, I sat there, watched it. It was funny. It was interesting. And I was, after the very first episode, I said, this won't last three more episodes because the religious right will have a field day. They will lose their shit. They will lose their minds and boycott. I I want to say it was on Fox. I'm not sure. I know it's on Netflix now. It got canceled and then Netflix picked it up. But after the first episode, I said, this won't last. I mean, it's a great show, good writing. It made you laugh in certain spots, and it made you think in certain spots. I really enjoyed the show. I loved the concept of the show. Now, we all know Satan, from what we've been taught in the religious world, Satan was was an angel, probably God's most beloved angel. He rebelled, tried to become God or take over heaven, and he was cast out. And the rest is history. He was forced to rule hell for, or the underworld for eternity. Now, this show premise is that he gets tired of running hell and he comes to earth and just hangs out and, you know, solves crime essentially, which is a fascinating premise in itself. I love it. However, as I thought about it, I was like, you know what? If we think of Satan or Lucifer, which we'll kind of get into some of that, the names and the problem that the Bible causes itself by how it words it and all that. We'll dive into that a little bit. But it's an interesting concept because 
if the stories are correct or if the story there is any truth to these stories or they are literal stories of an actual event then he rebelled against his father like any teenager and why wouldn't he want to say fuck this i'm done i'm tired of being the cause of all evil i'm just going to go chill on on earth for a while why wouldn't he i mean if we humanize these angels in this this realm we think of them, the spirit world these heavenly bodies we humanize them and we view them through a filter of us we see them as us that's why i get a kick out of the idea that god is some great haired man on a mountaintop no that's not what god or the creator of the universe is i'm sorry it's just it doesn't work that way i believe he's energy so in that context the show is awesome However, there are some problems when it comes to Satan. Now, Satan, let's face it, let's define what Satan is. Satan is the angel, fallen angel, that fell to earth, and his sole purpose is to defeat God, condemn our souls to hell, try to get as many of us to do bad, to commit crime, to commit sins against God, and other humans, to drag our souls to hell. As people of religion have been taught for ever, essentially since the inception of Satan, in which I think that's what happened, Satan was inception. Do I think there's evil in the world? Absolutely. But when we gave that evil a name, that name, whatever you want to call him or her, or it would be a better but if I, you know that is something funny. You always talk about hear people talk about when they refer to God, they say him, and then people get all pissy and bent out of control. Say, well, it could be a woman. You never hear that with Satan. It's always him. Just a sidebar there. But whenever we hear the word Satan or demons or pure evil, we are ingrained to be afraid, to be scared of that word, that name that ideal. So the mere mention of his name strikes fear in people. And this is what we're taught from a young age if you grow up in the church, essentially. This story has been told, but it goes much deeper, I think. I think there is much more going on when you talk about this story. And we, that is really what we want. I want to dive into. And I want to dive into Satanism and people that call themselves Satanists. I think that's such a literal term and people don't really understand it. And I didn't understand it. When I started researching this, I was shocked by what I found because my perception of what a Satanist is wasn't actually accurate. So let's go ahead and kind of get this going right now. When you talk about Satanists, I think you have to actually ask yourself, why do people follow Satan? Now, there are an array of actual reasons why people would do this, and it's different for every person. Everybody has their own way of thinking, and they approach things differently. We have to kind of hit a broad spectrum when we're talking about this. There is always going to be people that want to rebel, that want to be different than everybody else. There's always going to want to be people that go the opposite way of the majority. I think this is an a great aspect of that. I think this is a perfect example of that. Some just some people just want to go against the establishment of the church because the church is such a fear-based concept. The church tries to or the church's whole way of thinking is to scare you straight. And this is your brain on drugs kind of thing. They want to scare you into being a good person. You nobody can sit there and talk about religion and deny that fact it does preach good things it is a great way to lead your life and the morality of the stories the accounts is a great way to treat others the way you want to be treated don't murder don't steal all that happy stuff it's a great way to live your life and a great way to think and there's always going to be people that don't want to be told what to do 
want to just rebel for the sake of rebelling. And I think a lot of Satanists are exactly that. They want to go against the establishment. But the funny thing is, is, and this is something I learned, Satanism doesn't mean they worship Satan. That is something that your preacher or your priest on Sunday doesn't tell you. We're told that a Satanist worships Satan, and it's all about evil. No, that's not entirely accurate. Satanists are basically atheists. This does vary. There are different. There are just as many groups that follow Satan or are categorized as satanic as there are religions, essentially. And each one's different. Each one has their own kind of way to decipher their own teachings. And we'll kind of cover a little bit of that because this kind of opened my eyes a little bit, and that's one thing I want to share. But Satanism is more about atheism as a whole. They view humans as the center of the universe. It's all about the humans, which there is a similarity between religion and Satanism. The Bible talks about us being the center of the universe, talks about we were created in God's image. Now, is there satanic panic? Now, we've all heard stories in the 80s and early 90s, I believe, where there was a satanic panic. Everybody was scared to death of blood sacrifices, occult practices, which I've covered occult practices, but a lot of occult practices are grouped in with Satanism, and that's not the case. I'm sorry. They're not one and the same. But unfortunately, when you talk about the occult, people automatically think you're talking about Satanism. That's not the case. Go back and listen to that episode, please, and educate yourself. But we've heard these blood rituals, these human sacrifices, these animal sacrifices, and it was really common for people to get scared and people would hear things or immediately go to the Satan view or the Satan route. It's always a Satanist doing any bad thing in any community. And for instance, I want to do an episode. We have a th- bridge here called Screaming Bridge. Now, when I was in high school, and I'll do an episode on this eventually, but there's a Screaming Bridge, which supposedly had a lot of paranormal activity, in which I experienced some paranormal activity on this bridge at one, when I was a senior in high school. But the rumor was always there was a satanic cult somewhere in one of those houses, which, you know, that was the rumor. Now, was there? I don't know, probably not, or there could have been, but that's that's how it was in the late 80s and early 90s. Anything weird happened, anything evil, anything sinister, satanic worship automatically got the credit. Now, as the years progressed, I didn't, and as I got older, I didn't hear it as much as I'm starting to hear it now, especially in conspiracy theories with what's going on in the society today. You hear a lot about the Satan agenda and all that shit. And people automatically think that things that go against their way of thinking has some ties to evil or satanic practices. So I have to say, yes, there is a new satanic panic that is blossoming right now. All right, let's get back to discussing Satan and all of uh, the origin story of Satan, essentially. Now, When it comes to how Satan got started, where he first appeared in the Bible, or when he made his introduction into the Bible, scholars have been arguing this for probably as long as the Bible's been edited. And that is exactly what the Bible is. It is a bunch of books that people piece together to form a way of living or the religion of their choice. And it's actually a very good possibility that the whole Satan idea or concept is really just a translation error. Now, I'm going to cover a few different ways we can go about this or a few different ideas of how he he or she or it or whatever, like I said earlier, appears in the basis of religion. But the first one is, you know, it's just a translation error. The word Satan actually means adversary or the accuser. And it's a very good possibility that 
the original term or original usage of Satan in the Bible was just to describe the king. I believe it's it's uh, not coming to me right now, but uh, um, I believe it's a Babylonian king, and it was the way the people described him, not a fallen angel that is bent on destruction of the human race, bent on destruction of the earth, and bringing down heaven. That is not what the word Satan means. The word Satan is not necessarily used as a personal name in the Hebrew text. That is one way to look at it. That is one way to think about it. Like I said, scholars have been discussing this for years. And when you look at the term Lucifer, and this is my issue with the way the Bible was constructed. It has been pieced together. There are numerous books that they just left out and revised so many times, translated into different languages. And every time they do this, they add a little bit, subtract a little bit to fit their narrative, to push their agenda or to push their beliefs of what the Gospels are. And Lucifer is a perfect example of that. I believe Lucifer, the actual name Lucifer, appears in the Old Testament once, I believe, in the King James Version. I could be wrong on this, but I'm pretty, it might be more than that, but it, it, just a handful of times we'll say that. And here's the kicker. The Old Testament is based off the Hebrew text. And when the Hebrew text was written, Lucifer, the name Luc- Lucifer wasn't around. Now, because I know this because Lucifer is a Latin name. Latin wasn't even invented at the time of the writing of the Old Testament, but yet it's in there now. So this it means that an editor pieced it together, added this, and just used the popular term, which was at the time Lucifer, injected it into the story. But just the mere fact that Satan, or I'm sorry, Lucifer, the name Lucifer appears now, but it wasn't, it wasn't in existence. It means they're pushing the agenda. It means they're trying to actually form an opinion. Now, and let's face it, with the addition of the New Testament, we have a protagonist, Jesus, and every good story needs an antagonist. So why don't we give him one? And here we go. Lucifer or Satan pops up. The perfect antagonist for Jesus. So in that respect, the Bible is a great story. And I'm not saying that the Bible is completely horseshit. No, that's not what I'm saying. If you read the Bible, if you practice some of their teachings or principles that are taught in the Bible, it's a great way to live your life. The Ten Commandments, amazing. Or whatever religion you choose, whatever holy text you go by, I'm sure there's some great concepts in there and some great ways to lead your life and live your life, I should say. So, I mean, I'm not bashing at all. My issue with the Bible is that it is it has been translated, it has been modified to push an agenda or push a way of thinking. That is my issue. And whenever people start pushing their agendas or pushing their thoughts, that's when it gets hinky and that's when mistakes are made and that's when you get further and further away from the truth. Okay, now let's talk about the Garden of Eden. It is common or is taught that Adam and Eve were tempted by a serpent. Most people believe that Satan was the serpent. He took serpent form to tempt Eve. But it never says it in the Bible. It does not say that Satan was the serpent. People are reading into this. People have read into this and basically just made the assumption that the serpent being evil, trying to tempt man, cause original sin, was Satan. It doesn't say that. Now, if we look into the Garden of Eden story a little bit further and just take it at face value, and this is some, a story that has always perplexed me, and I'm not coming up with this theory by any stretch. I've heard this theory, but it, when I heard this theory, it made sense to me. I said, okay, that might be my problem with this story because it just doesn't make sense. Basically, just to summarize, the serpent got Eve to eat from the Tree of Knowledge. Now, let's think about this for a minute. The tree of knowledge. What is knowledge? If you live in today's society, everybody talks about how important education is, how important knowledge is. Go to college, get an education. That way, you are better prepared to have a successful life. So, why is this a sin, Eve? 
defied God by eating from the tree of knowledge. Why did God want to keep the mankind stupid and not give them knowledge? Because he knew that with knowledge, there would be questioning of his validity, his concepts. He didn't want the competition. And so Satan, if Satan was a serpent, or the serpent was sent by Satan, whatever you want to believe, did this to defy God, then isn't that a good thing? Isn't education a good thing? Isn't learning and wanting mankind to grow and evolve a good thing? Why keep us suppressed? It's a fascinating way of looking at it. And if you look at this, the text or the story literally, that is a very valid question. Now, I know some religious people are probably losing their mind right now and banging their head up against the wall, but that's okay. We're just asking questions here, and that's what I do. I ask questions. I don't take everything at face value. I don't want to just hear something and automatically think that is 100% factual. I want to listen to it, find the good, the bad, the ugly, and then maybe hear the counter argument, look at the other side of the coin, and then make an assessment. I'm not saying that the serpent wasn't Satan. I'm not saying the Garden of Eden didn't happen. I'm just saying the way the story is now does not make sense to me. If you have read or have heard about the Book of Enoch, which does not appear in the Bible, which, like I said, there's a lot more books that were not included in the Bible because, for various reasons, probably because they didn't push the agenda of the church or the writers or the editors, I like to call them, of the Bible. It didn't fit their story, their narrative. So they left it. Oh, we'll just leave this out. That might cause too many questions. But the book of Enoch has a story in it of the Watchers. Now, what were the Watchers? The Watchers were angels sent to watch over mankind. What happened to these Watchers? They fell in love with mankind. They adored them. They wanted to educate them. They wanted to teach them the ways of the universe. And yes, get a little freaky with them and procreate. So what happened? God cast them out and they, I guess, plummeted the earth and interbred with mankind. Now, the leader of the Watchers obviously was pissed that they got cast out. So what's that story sound like? Sounds a lot like the Satan story. If this was a college student writing the uh, Bible, their ass would be kicked out for plagiarism. So obviously what appears to me, now I'm not saying I'm right, it looks like they needed to find an antagonist for Jesus. So they looked at this story and boom, they have it. Now they tweaked it a little bit to fit their narrative to fit their concept of heaven and hell, but it's straight plagiarism from the book of Enoch. They defied God by wanting to enlighten mankind. What kind of God wants to keep their worshipers dumb, uneducated? That doesn't seem like the perfect God to me. Now, I could be wrong with this. I could be reading into this, but this is something that you have to look at, something you have to question. You can't take everything at face value. You have to question everything in life. That is how you get to the truth. That is how you understand what's going on in the world. Did God not want us to be enlightened because he knew it would question us because it would cause sin and we would have free will. We would have choice. So is Satan really responsible for free will if you believe he was the serpent. Not God. God wanted to keep free will out of it. Satan wanted to add it. So we have a power struggle between two entities for our souls. Now, who's right? Who's wrong? What side are you on? And that's where Satanism comes in. You have Christianity. You have Satanism. You have belief in, I shouldn't say Christianity, belief in a good God and then his adversary. And I'm sure people who worship, I, I, we're going to talk about this in a minute too, worshiping Satan. If you actually worship Satan as in the person like you, a Christian or religious people worship God, 
they think they're right too. They believe in their beliefs, just like people on Sunday that go to church or go to mass or whatever religion you partake. They believe they're right. What I'm saying is proof is in the middle. It's not about right or wrong. Both sections or both groups have the right to their freaking opinion. But my problem with religion is if everything that doesn't exactly go along with them, they immediately say it's satanic, it's evil. Just because it doesn't fit in their ideology. That is narrow-minded. And that is why wars are fought for religion. Because of that stupidity, that narrow-mindedness of my way or no way. When the world is shades of gray, it's not black and white. And religion is no different, but yet we make it black and white by saying, this is how it is. There's no variance from it. And how many wars have been started because of that? It's still going on today in the year 2020. So let me wrap up this portion of the origin and stories of Satan. You know, whether or not Satan is just misunderstood kind of was the catch-all bad guy and really got the hose by the religious people that thought, or the religious people that needed a bad guy, if Satan actually exists? Or is Satan just a concept for evil? Or, here's another one, is Satan just a concept for everything the other side of what God would be? And like I've said before, I do not believe God is a is a Man, I do not believe it is a woman. I believe it is energy. Is that a positive energy? And then Satan would be the negative energy? I know the world is based on balance. We have to have balance in the universe. Balance in this world. You have to have good. You have to have bad. You can't have too much of one thing. You have to have something else to bring everything together. So we have one kind of energy which is interpreted as God. Another kind of energy which is interpreted as evil. All right, now let's get to the nitty-gritty of Satanism. Yes, there are people that worship Satan. And like I said earlier, what I found out was just because they identify as a Satanist or they practice Satanic worship does not mean they worship Satan. There are a few different, I wouldn't say there's as many groups that call themselves Satanist as there are religions, but there's three main ones, basically, if you do some research that you hear talked about more often than not, naturally, the Church of Satan, which LaVey founded in the 60s, you have the Satanic Temple, and you also have Temple of Set. Those are the three major ones. Now, the Satanic Temple is fairly recent. It's new to the game. The Church of Satan and Satanic Temple. They don't worship Satan. They don't look at Satan as a deity, essentially. They do not worship Satan. It's more about going against religion in anarchy, essentially. It focuses mainly on we are the center of the universe. We are divine. They are really just atheists with fancier names. Now, a lot of people talk about satanic rituals. Yes, the Church of Satan does believe in magic and practice magic. And I'm going to cover especially uh, the Church of Satan and I believe the Satanic Temple, cover their rules, talk about what they believe, their commandments for just for comparison. And I was shocked when I read these because, spoiler alert, some of it makes freaking sense. but. Satanic Temple does not practice magic. It's more of a political group than anything else. So the Satanic Temple basically is just activist. They don't do dark magic. They don't believe in an actual Satan. I mean, what's the point almost? It's just basically, they're just the new atheists, essentially. Now, Church of Satan, like I said, does practice a little bit of magic. Probably, you know, sex magic and all that happy stuff. And you're dancing around cauldrons of whatever, you know, in black robes. What you see in Hollywood, I guess. And that is another question. I've never been to one of these. I don't even think I've met one, somebody that's a member. How much of this is actually correct? We know the goth look, essentially, is what is portrayed. 
But how accurate is that? I've seen interviews with people who are Satanists or practicing Satanists. You know, they do have a little bit darker image. But how much is that is reality and how much of that is going for the scare factor? That's interesting. If a Satanist wants to contact me, gitnpodcast.com, I would love to hear their opinion and why they do what they do, what they and actually what they believe. Please reach out, talk to me. I'll bring you on the podcast if you if you want, or just we'll talk. I'm always up for hearing the other side. I'm okay with conversing with people with different opinions of that I hold. We can agree to disagree. That's how you learn. That's how you how you educate yourself. Now, let's talk about the temple set for a minute before I talk about some of the rules and regulations, I guess, of the Church of Satan and the Satanic Temple. The Temple of Set, they do believe in a deity. They think Satan is actually Set, which was the Egyptian god. They actually practice, from what I've researched, what I've read, they actually practice and worship Set, and they think Satan is Set. Now, this goes along closer to what Hollywood portrays as satanic rituals or Satanism. It's more of an the occult based what we think of as occult, which I discussed that like I said earlier, this means anything supernatural. Religions is occult. But in today's society people automatically say occult. They think of Satanist and worshiping devils and witchcraft and all that stuff. When it's just the supernatural, you're dealing with the unknown. But it is what it is. We'll just, I'll just use it for that term, even though I don't completely wholeheartedly buy into it. I think it's just, it's split in hairs, I know, but little things like that piss me off. But the Temple of Set is more of what we picture or what we think of when we think of Satan worshipers. And probably a little bit darker, a little bit scarier. You know, might not be. I've never met any of them, of them either. So probably wouldn't want to meet them in a back alley somewhere. But I'm sure they're probably decent people. And they're probably members in all walks of life. That you would not even know to be members or practicers of this version of Satanism. Who knows? But that. Temple of Set is a little bit darker, probably, from the way it appears to me. I'm not an expert, but it's a little bit darker. So let's get into the uh, actual what they believe. And we're kind of, we'll probably end it there. Well, we might touch a little bit more on it here in the future, but or in future episodes. But I want to definitely cover what they believe, because that actually was fascinating to me. I really was shocked by what I read. Okay, let's start with the Church of Satan. It's called basically the rules of the earth. One, don't give your opinion advice unless asked. Okay? Two, don't tell troubles to others unless you are sure they want to hear them. When in others' lair, show him respect or else don't go. If a guest is in your lair annoys you, treat him cruelly and without mercy. Okay. Do not make sexual advances unless you are given the mating signals. Don't take that which does not belong to you unless it is a burden and he cries out to be relieved of that item or whatever. Seven. Acknowledge the power of magic if you have employed it successfully to obtain desire. If you deny the power of magic after having called upon it with success, you will lose all you have obtained. Okay. Eight, do not complain about anything to which you need not subject yourself. Like it. Do not harm little children. Do not kill non-human animals unless you are attacked or for food. Eleven. When walking in open territory, bother no one. If someone bothers you, ask them to stop. If he doesn't, destroy him. A bit extreme, but okay. Oh, that's right. Yeah, let me just clarify. The Temple of Set did break away from 
uh, the Church of Satan back in 1975. It was in my notes. I forgot about it. My bad. Okay, so Church of Satan rules. Makes sense, honestly. Not Nothing major here. Um, don't give your opinion or advice unless asked. I agree with that. Hey, don't tell anybody your troubles unless you're sure they want to hear them. All for that. Um, big one toward the end. Don't hurt little kids and don't kill animals. Unless you want food, the animals, I should say. That kind of defeats the, or is not what we're told, not what we uh, understand Satanists to be. This here, the internet has been filled with, and I've posted on my Twitter account, you know, animal killings with satanic markings. Odds are most of these are just not real Satanists or just kids playing jokes, but people that don't actually understand Satanism or think that's what Satanism is. Problem is not the Church of Satan if they abide by these rules. Now, the last one, when walking upon territory, bother no one. If someone bothers you, ask them to stop. If he, he or she doesn't, destroy him. Bit extreme. I wouldn't say destroy, but might be a touch overkill. I don't know. I mean, doesn't sound nefarious to me, per se, but I don't know. Let's see. Okay, the satanic temper rules. One, should strive to act with compassion to all creatures. Two, the struggle for justice is ongoing, necessary pursuit that should prevail over laws and institutions. Okay. Do as you will, I guess. Subject to one's own will. Your body is subject to your own will. Makes sense. The freedom of the others should be respected, including the freedom to offend. That's kind of like, you know, you have the right to say whatever you want. For the freedom of others should be respected, including the freedom to offend. So they have the right to say what they want. Freedom of speech. Five. Don't encroach upon others. Six. Belief should conform to our best scientific understanding of the world. Okay, makes sense. Um, Next one. People are fallible. Yep, we sure are. Uh, if we make a mistake, we should do our best to rectify it. Not a bad concept. I like it. Uh, nine. Every tenant is a golden possibility. Um, be noble in your actions. I like it. Uh, last one. Uh, the spirit of compassion, wisdom, and justice should always prevail. You know, all these sound pretty good. Of these two, I would say, the uh, Satanic Temple and the Church of Satan. Don't harm people. Don't harm animals. Unless it's for food. Okay. It's all about personal power is what I take from this. It's all about you. And that's, you know, being selfish is not necessarily a bad thing. You need to take ownership of your life. I mean, these rules, if they go by these, the Satanic Temple and the Church of Satan, not bad. I mean, there's nothing really hardcore there. A little bit over the top with destroy them, but, you know, but still be good. You know, don't offend. Don't push your problems on other people. I can get behind all that if that's what it truly is. Um, I don't know. Let me know what you think. Um, do you think maybe these are just false or these are just put up there to throw us off the, the, uh, off the scent of evil? Um, I don't know. I really don't know. I definitely think there are probably people out there doing bad things in the name of Satan or whatever, but might not be these, these two groups. Maybe the, you know, the temple set might be more of darker. I don't know. I really didn't research that one that much. But, you know, let me know what you think. Be sure to contact me at gitmpodcast at gmail.com. If you have a story about or have experience with this, follow me on Twitter at night underscore ghost. That is probably the best way to get a hold of me. If you want to uh, help the podcast, Go to ghostofthenightpodcast.com. We have podcast t-shirts and all that happy stuff there. You can also become a patron of our Patreon account where you get some extra bonus stuff. Just go to the page and you can, you know, for as little as two bucks a month, you can get all that stuff. 
Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel where we do extra videos. Every podcast episode has a video as well. I think I got it all. So, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thank you for uh, checking it out. And we will see you next time on Ghost of the Night. Take care, everybody.